Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to QHE channel. In this series of videos, inshallah, we will learn about the sort or morphology of Arabic verbs. So let's begin, inshallah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Let's learn first what is morphology. Morphology is a science in the classical Arabic that is related to the various types of conjugations or patterns of the verbs and nouns. In Arabic language, a specific pattern of verbs and nouns corresponds to a specific meaning. Now let's see what are the benefits of learning morphology. When a student learns morphology, a student can then recognize the various types of patterns and hence find the correct meanings of the words in the Quran, Hadith, and other Arabic texts. A student can also recognize the patterns in the Arabic text even without the signs. So let's say, mashallah, you have learned the morphology. Then if you read a text, it does not have signs like vowels, like fatha, kasra, bomma. Inshallah, you'll be able to read the text because by that time you would know the knowledge of, you'll have the knowledge of morphology. You would recognize the patterns of the verbs and the nouns, and inshallah, you can read the non haraka texts. Inshallah. Now let's look into what is. What is a response? What are the responsibility of a student? In order for us to be proficient in morphology, we need to memorize certain tables of verb patterns. And believe me, it won't be difficult because we will go over again and again. And as we practice more words, it will be very natural to you, inshallah. We also need to practice identifying words from the Quran. The more practice you do, inshallah, the more better you'll get and inshallah, you'll become proficient in morphology, inshallah. Let's look into what are the various areas of verbs. In Arabic language, there are three different areas of verbs, okay? The first one is simple verbs. We call it mujarrad sahih. Simple verbs, in English, we call it verb from one. So verb from one comprise of three types, sorry, six types of verbs, okay? There are six types of simple verbs. So that's the first category of verbs. The second area or category of verb is called increased verb forms, mazid fi. These verb forms have 12 forms in it. And inshallah, when we will learn, it will be very clear to you what are those 12 forms. And the third area is called irregular verbs. Goi, sohi, okay? That includes both simple and increased verb forms. Okay, now let's move on, inshallah. So let's look into the pattern in general. As I mentioned at the beginning, in Arabic language, a specific pattern of verb or noun gives a specific meaning. So let's look into what does a pattern tell us? A specific verb pattern or conjugation tells us about the following characteristics of the verb. So when you, are, when you will get familiar with the patterns of verbs, so when we, you will see a particular pattern, you can tell what is the tense of that verb. Is it past, present, or future? You can also tell the voice of the verb. Is it active or passive? What do I mean by active or passive? For example, he does is active. He is being done that is passive. So when you will get the knowledge, looking at the verb pattern, you can tell what is the voice. Also looking at the pattern, you will inshallah know the aspects of the verbs, okay? What, what are the aspects? The aspects contain person, plurality, gender. So looking at the aspect, you can tell whether the doer 
or the subject, meaning on which the work has been done, the doer or the subject, whether the doer or the subject is third person, second person, or first person. You can also tell whether the doer or the subject is a singular or dual or plural. You can also tell whether the doer or the subject is a male or female, okay? So let's move on. There are more information you can tell looking at a pattern. You can also tell what are the root letters of the verb. Let's look into the root letters a little bit more. The basic building blocks of Arabic verbs are the root letters. Most of the verbs have three root letters. Root letters in a verb are read in a sequential manner from right to left. And inshallah, when we will go over examples, it will be more clear to you. Also, the base or root meaning of a verb is found from the dictionary using the root letters. So the root letters are very important in a verb. And inshallah, when we will go over more examples, it will be very clear to you, inshallah. Now let's look into more characteristics that we get looking at a verb pattern. You can also tell the final meaning. What do I mean by that? So from the root letters, if, if I plug in the root letters in the dictionary, the dictionary will give me base meaning. Then based on the other characteristics, like the tense, the voice, and also the aspects and the base meaning, according to all those four characteristics, you can formulate the final meaning. Also, one more thing, the pattern will tell you, the pattern will tell you the grammatical state of present tense verb. There is no grammatical state for past tense verb. Past tense verbs are actually stateless. What is a state? You know, the way human beings have moods, Let's say verbs have moods too. So a verb, a present tense verb, have three kind of states. It has states rafa, nasb, jazm. These are three states. The first one, rafa, is called the default, default state. Inshallah, we'll go over the state more detail in later sessions. Now let's look into an example of pattern, and let's see how we can incorporate all those characteristics we just learned. For example, I have a pattern here. The pattern is fa'ala. So when you will have the more knowledge of morphology, you will be memorizing tables, inshallah. Looking at, the, looking at a word like this, fa'ala, or any other word, that takes exactly this pattern as fa'ala, meaning the first letter has fatha, second letter has fatha, last letter has fatha. A pattern like that, when you see, you'll right away you'll know this is a past tense. You'll also know this is active. And inshallah, when I will go over the tables of verbs, it will be very clear to you, inshallah. Also looking at the pattern, you can extract the root letters. Over here, the root letters are fa, ain, lam. And once you plug in these three root letters in the dictionary, the dictionary will give you the base meaning to do. Also, this pattern tells you that about the doer or the subject. It tells you the doer or the subject is a third person singular male. For example, let's he. Okay. Now, based on the tense, the voice, the root letters, the aspects, you can very easily finalize the final meaning. What will be the final meaning? I know the doer, doer is a he, and it's a past tense, and I know the base meaning is to do, so the final meaning will be he did, okay? And the grammatical state, I already told you, past tense don't have states, we call them stateless or mabni, okay? So this, uh, this is an example of the characteristics you can find looking at a pattern. Let's look into another example, inshallah. So we have another example over here, yaf'alu, okay? So when you will learn all the patterns, looking at this pattern, right away you can tell this is a present tense. 
because ya fatha at the end is a prefix that is part of the present tense. And again, when we will go over the table, it will be very clear to you. So you would know this is a present tense. The fatha on the ya tells you this is active tense. Now, if I exclude the prefix, I'm left with what? Root letters, right? So what are the root letters? Fa, ain, lam. And if I plug in these root letters in the dictionary, dictionary will give me the base meaning to do. And the aspect, looking at the pattern, you would know the aspects or the doer or the subject of this verb is third person singular male. Okay, now easily I can formulate the final meaning. I know the doer or the subject is third person singular male, that means he. And I know it's a present tense, I know it's active, and I know the root letter gives me the base meaning to do. So what would be the final meaning? He does. And how about the grammatical state? This is a default state. Okay, so this, these two examples showed you how to extract the characteristics or the information. You need all this information to finalize the meaning of the verb, okay? Now let's look into the actual construction of the verb, okay? What is it made of? So let's look into past tense first, okay? So past tense, they are made of root letters and suffix, okay? Root letters and suffix. Past tense verbs do not have prefix. Each of the suffixes in the past tense indicates a particular combination of aspects. Meaning when you look at the particular past tense, looking at the suffix, you can tell the person, whether it's a third, second, or first person, you can tell number, whether it's singular, dual, or plural. You can also tell the gender, whether it's a male or female. Okay, now let's look into an example, inshallah. So we have an example over here, Fa'alat. Fa'alat, this is a past tense. When you will learn the table, you know, very easily looking at the, this pattern, you can tell this is a past tense. This is a past tense because I don't see any prefix. And also the ta sakina tells me this is a past tense. And again, when I will go over the table, it will be very clear to you. So the ta sakina tells me this is a third person singular female, okay? And if I exclude the ta sakina, I'm left with what? Root letters. And the root letters are fa, ain, lam. So this is in general the structure or the conjugation or the construction of a past tense. Past tense are made of root letters and suffix. Over here, we just have one example. Let's look into the construction or conjugation of present tense. So present tense verbs, unlike the past tense, past tense have what? They have root letters and they have suffix, but present tense also have prefix. So present tense have prefixes, it has root letters, and they also have suffixes. A suffix in a present tense indicates the plurality in general. So whenever you see whatever the suffix you see, it indicates a particular plurality, whether it's a singular, dual, or plural. The prefix, on the other hand, for second, uh, for, uh, sorry, for present tense, indicates the person, whether it's a third person, second person, or first person. Also, it indicates the voice, whether it's active or passive. Okay, let's look into an example, inshallah. Over here, we have one example. We have Yaf'aluna, okay? This is a present tense. The ya fatha at the beginning is a prefix. This prefix is telling me this is a third person male. The fatha on the ya also telling me this is active. If it was passive, it should have had domba, okay? So ya fatha together telling me this is third person male 
The doer is a third person male. Also, this is active. Okay. The wow sakina noon fatha at the end. The suffix is telling me this is a plural verb. Okay. So now if I exclude the prefix and suffix, I'm left, uh, I'm left with fa, rain, la. These are the root letters. So this is the general construction of a present tense. Present tense have prefix, present tense have root letters, present tense have suffix. But I should also tell you, not all the present tense have suffix. If it was a third person singular male, it would have been yef alu. You would have you would not have any suffix. When we will go over the table, it will be very clear to you. Okay, so Alhamdulillah, today in general, we learned that when we look at a pattern, or you know, if you're reading a text, as you will be as you will memorize the table, you can recognize the verbs. And by recognizing the verbs, you can tell all the information whether it's a past tense, present tense, whether the third person, or whether it's, gen whether it's a male or female, all this information. And definitely from the dictionary, the, uh, from the base meaning, you can figure out the final meaning. Alhamdulillah. So these are some general information about Arabic verbs. Inshallah, inshallah in the next session, we will learn about all the other patterns. Over here, we just look, looked into some, some patterns, okay? So there are many combinations of patterns based on the combination of combinations of aspects. Inshallah, in the next session, we will look into all those combination of aspects or, or patterns for the root letters, fa, ain, lam. And also we will try to identify some verbs from the Quran for the root letters fa, rain, lam. Now, why we are specifying only this uh, set of root letters? As we saw that the base meaning, if you plug in fa, rain, lam, is to do. What is a verb? Verb is related to actions, right? So that's why usually fa, ain, lam are used as standard root letters to explain the verb forms in general. But we are not going to be using only these three root letters. Definitely, definitely, we will learn many, many new root letters in later sessions. But inshallah, next um, session, we will go over the tables in, that will input all the patterns and we'll practice some words from Quran. Until then, please keep us in your dua. May Allah grant barakah on all of your all your efforts. I mean, if you like this session, if you find this session beneficial, please choose the like button. Please subscribe. Please uh, please share with your friends and families. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.